pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Hello. We have a uh, need for non-public today. Yes, we do. Okay, under uh, personnel. Okay, I'll entertain a motion on the minutes of May 18th. I would uh, suggest that we uh, accept the minutes as prepared. Okay, we have a motion by Commissioner O'Brien <coughs> to accept the minutes as written. Uh, I second it. By Commissioner Coop, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Captain, if you'd like to proceed with the uh, monthly reports. Yes. Uh, so before we begin, I apologize um, for those uh, that have not met Chief Chase at one time or another. I'd like to uh, welcome him back. Um, he'll be with us for the for the next year. Um, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Whoa. <laughs> Most robust. <laughs> Um, I'm sorry, go ahead, Captain. All right, perfect. We'll start with the incidents, cases here to date. Um, so in May, we had an increase uh, to 48. That's a 2.13% increase. Uh, 69 offenses for the month of May. So last month we had 47, this month 48, so we're pretty much on pace. Um, so what you see behind it, all the paperwork, and um, broken down by officer on what cases they did have, and a little breakdown for you all. Next one is the arrest. Uh, in the month of May, we had an increase of 109.09 uh, to 23. In the month of April, we had 11. A lot of that's due for, if you look back in March, remember we had 33 incidents. It's catching up on those cases. We could have had some warrants and some other stuff in there, which I did see in there if you look at the background we had some arrests on some warrants. A lot of it's motor vehicle and some other incidents at residence that um, you can read in there, disorderly conduct and some other stuff. Traffic stops. Um, the month of May, we had a decrease, that's a good thing, um, of 8.78%. Um, oh, no, no, I was thinking um, traffic uh, crashes. Collisions. Traffic stops um, decreased from 8.78%. 187 in the month of May, um, down from 205 in the month of April. Uh, a lot of traffic out there coming into May. Uh, we did have some um, highway safety grants that kicked in in the uh, month of May near the end of it. Uh, you'll really see when we get to next month, which is right now, June, we should have a good increase because um, highway safety grants kicked, kicked in. Um, you'll see everything behind it, what streets, uh, we did some different breakdowns uh, that you probably haven't seen before from IMC. Um, we have the month, I mean the days, Sunday through Saturday, um, which show 189 stops. We have what state they came from. Um, you can see the stops there. Interesting. Yeah, it's pretty neat how it breaks it down. Um, the next one is civil complaint warnings verbals. Um, arrest from motor vehicles. Uh, breaks it all down there, too. Um, make, breaks it down from male to females. So you have all that information in the background. The only thing I couldn't break down when you get to the, um, the actual stops, we can break it down by the officer, but I can't get the officer's name like the other ones do. So what I can give you guys is their ID number, so you'll have that. Next time, unfortunately, IMC doesn't break it down like the other way. The incidents and the arrest. Captain, some... Do you find that um, by dissecting this so much that it becomes cumbersome? Just let us know. Okay. Yeah. 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 It's not a big deal. It's good stuff. I mean, it actually does break it down pretty well. Uh, collisions. Uh, this is a good thing. Back to that. Uh, we're down to eight. In the month of uh, May, that's a decrease of 33.33%, down from 12 in April. That's what we want to see. Um, if you see the breakdown, you'll see the streets that we used, that were the crashes that did have it. 
our normal ones, Center Street, South Main Street. Um, we had Middleton Road, North Main Street, Pine Hill Road, um, and Taylor Drive, um, which that was actually at the facility on Taylor Drive. I actually went to that. Unfortunately, somebody hit the building. Um, what you'll see is the breakdown of how many we had for the year, um, up to date from January to May 31st, which is 56. And when you look at the report from last year, uh, we had 65, so we're down. So it's a good thing. The visibility can cause that stuff. Uh, personal analysis report, uh, you'll see the breakdowns there. Um, remember, officers are on different shifts. They have midnights, day shifts. They do shift around. So some will have more than others. Um, the big factor that you do see every month is um, Officer Devine up at that school. So, um, and Jason's... Um, contributing factor with some cases there too. So we had 48 in the month of um, May, um, 14 for Officer Devine up at the school. If you look at what we had for the year, we have 291 cases, 97 arrests up to date. At this point from last year, we had 248 and 137 arrests. So incidents are up. Arrested down. So, something to look at. Uh, the next thing is a little budget overview. Um, what I do every week um, and for you guys for the month. Uh, we're at payroll week 22 when I did this, which was last week, which we should be at 42.31%. Uh, the PD budget is at 42.57%. Um, so, right now we're overspent by 0.26% which is, comes out to about $5,600, which, which is pretty good, especially with the buyouts that we did have. Uh, dispatch is at 42.79%. Uh, we're overspent by 0.48%. That's $2,568.24. A lot of that's still catching up from our annual purchases that we do a lot in January and February, so uh, getting closer. Animal percent, 36.5% which is the MCO, um, it's underspent by 5.81%, which comes out to about $1,554.90. So the overall budget um, as of last week was 42.55%. That's 1.3%, um, underspent, I mean overspent by 1.3%, um, which comes out to $3,574.56. So we do know that we, um, we have some hires coming up there, so um, we know that Officer Corporal Larichelle's heading up to the school in August. We do have a um, fill-in for that in the patrol as we have two hires coming in. He'll talk more probably on that. I think you have that on yours. So that money will start catching. We will start using it right now. We don't have it, so that's why we're catching up, which is pretty good but give it a little time. Um, we'll have to manage it pretty tight as we keep moving forward, as you'll see all the paperwork for it. And I'll get into the SRO report coming from Officer Devine. So May was the ninth month of the school for SRO Devine with 22 days of school. SRO Divine responded to several incidents in the Kingswood High School and Middle School. SRO Divine wrote 12 reports. So 10 of those reports were up at the high school. She took a report of criminal threatening, which resulted in school discipline and referral to the juvenile probation and parole for a CANS assessment. It's a strength and needs assessment. A CANS must be completed prior to charges being filed. Uh, she took five reports regarding students in possession of tobacco vapes. All students received school disciplines. That's what we want. We do take those um, items, put them in um, evidence, and go up for destruction. Uh, she investigated a report that a student had used racial slur numerous times, purposely directed towards others who were offended by the racial slur. She is still investigating with the assistance of Corporal Jason Boucher. Um, she took a report for an assault that occurred in another jurisdiction. The report was forwarded to that police department that has the jurisdiction rights for it. Uh, she took a report for violation of privacy. The investigation is ongoing, and Corporal Jason Boucher is assisting. She assisted the Wolf Bar Police Department in locating a juvenile who had run away 
and was also missing from school with another student. And she participated in meeting regarding a Kingswood Next Step team. The mission of the Kingswood Next Step, te Next Step team is to provide intervention and support for identified at-risk students to increase overall uh, positive behavior and academic success. So the middle school had two reports that she um, documented. Uh, she assisted the administrative staff for safety and security by enhancing law enforcement's presence with the assistance of the Wolf Bar Police Department officers and troopers for the New Hampshire State Police, Troop E, to reduce criminal activity in the middle school after a raise in activity in April. She assisted the students who have had mental health crisis. Another officer was requested and a student was transported to the hospital by a family member. SRO Divine did not take a report on that. SRO Divine assisted administrative and staff with two disorderly conduct incidents by one student, which she did not take a report on, as the student received school discipline only. She took a report of off-duty regarding a student who had made comments about school shooting in a joking manner. SRO Divine had the Wolfboro and Tufnaboro officers assist in the investigation, the investigation found no probable cause, no true threat to charge the student. The student received school discipline only. Uh, she contacted the Division of Children, Youth, and Families, DCYF, regarding a report from a student of a potential assault that occurred off campus. And she attended a, another donut party after a student who was not completing classwork completed the classwork, and the student had requested a donut party with us so divine in school costume. That's almost three months in a row that she's uh, been doing that. So you see her um, summary for the month of May. That's in the background. And I'll get on to Jason Boucher's monthly report for the um, elementary schools in Crescent Lake. Corporal Boucher was assigned as the school resource officer for Carpenter School in Crescent Lake during the month of May. He was away from the school for tr two days for training in Concord for Homeland Security Emergency Operation Plans. Kingswood Middle School and High School also attended this training with him, which was the administrative <coughs> staff, which is a good thing because that's what we tried to get them to go to the one day. So the two days is actually even better, which is great that the administrative staff went to that. Corporal Boucher was present at the Carpenter Elementary School and Crescent Lake School during the month of May. He spent most of the time at Crescent Lake during the month because of the end of the year and students acting out. The sixth grade class has been quite a hand handful in the past several months. So his presence has been requested often. With that being said, Corporal Boucher has been assisting with recess, lunch duties, <coughs> and this allows him to learn the students' names, which provides a first name and connection, which is, that's what we're going for. He continues to sit at the rear of the Art Center building in the mornings to keep an eye on the students arriving in the morning. Corporal Boucher has been monitoring the area because of complaints about reckless driving speed parking issues. This action by Corporal Boucher seems to have slowed the complaints about students' drivers. He's been pretty much doing it all year. You know, I'd just like to add that I'm impressed by two of the points he brought up in here, which was the school, schools attending the emergency planning, yeah. taking advantage of that as well as the PD. I, I think that's fantastic. And also the uh, uh, preparing uh, an active shooter event for Huggins, Yep. whatever that's going to be. But yep. Yeah, he's been working on that. So I think they have a, it's probably in here. Once I get to a June 20th or 21st, is the, he's helping out with the whole school day. Because I think the last day of school is June 20th. Yeah. The teachers are June 21st. The last one he, that he was going to do it with the staff was snowed out because I think it was in February. So they um, put it on ju June 21st for a day there. He'll have half the school in the morning, half the school in the, um, in the afternoon. Uh, there was a bus incident with Crescent Lake students that a parent wanted to have him handle, but Corporal Boucher learned that this was not a police matter. Corporal Boucher spoke with the principal who agreed it will be, uh, it was an issue to handle. So police, I mean, so the school took care of that. Corporal Boucher assisted with traffic for Crescent Lake School, walk and bike day. I believe that was um, near the end of May. Actually, it was a good day, success for everything. Corporal Boucher had a welfare check for Crescent Lake students and found that found she was found that she was with her mother in the Manchester, but forgot to call out for the day. Corporal Boucher met with a Carpenter Elementary School news principal, um, and Corporal Boucher was also assigned to work with Huggins Hospital administrative staff 
to set up an active shooter active event, which um, we pushed that off. We were going to do one at the end of June, so now we kind of pushed it off because it was a little rushed to do it, and now we can't use the space because they got some things going on at Huggins, so we're going to do it in the fall and use um, Huggins Hospital. And you'll see the backup work that, um, that he put in there, the summary. That's all I got. We can move to the chief. Thank you, Captain. Yep. Mr. Chairman, would you like me to proceed? No. No. Hey, thanks. I'll reiterate, I'm uh, really excited and glad to be back here, and uh, I'm looking forward to the next year. So in May uh, 22, I had the oath of office right here, and we kind of literally hit the ground running from there. Um, first of all, personnel have been very gracious in getting me back up to speed with things that make our operation run, such as uh, tech changes, access codes, telephone setup, messaging, email, and the latest version of Word. Sherry, thank you. Uh, I wasn't even closely familiar with whatever that version is. So thanks for helping me out. Uh, I met with the HR director, the town manager, regarding the public safety building renovation. We were at Memorial Hospital for Northern Human Services, Mobile Crisis Unit. That was training on involuntary emergency admissions, something in our state that still needs an awful lot of work. When uh, people that handle the fiscal issues of our state, I always say, please do what you can for mental illness. It's just very, very important. Um, met with the town manager and the finance director regarding the downtown area, fiscal matters and general items of mutual concern. Uh, Captain and the executive assistant, we sat down and started going over uh, the state of our uh, current budget, maybe some of the prep plans we'll have for 2024. There's no contract negotiations in next year's budget because I believe that's the third year mark. Uh, yep. A second year. Second year, okay. So that, that won't be any part of the uh, next year's proposal. Met with the principals and construction and renovation of the facility. I met with the superintendent of schools regarding the second school resource officer and the memorandum of understanding that has since been negotiated. And Corporal La Rochelle, as you know, has been affirmed by the school board and uh, he'll start up there this fall. Good for him. Uh, I met with Lisa Paquette of the Grand State News who a nice article on my return. Thank you, Alyssa. I attended a security meeting at Brewster Academy. I uh, also attended the Carroll County Chiefs meeting in Tamworth. I conducted a staff meeting with the department members, uh, and we can address that elsewhere in this report, some of that of which will be for non-public. Uh, I also attended two non-public commission meetings in the reporting period. And there were several other functions handled by the captain that I was unable to be present at. Under personnel, as you folks know, Officer Chris Dustin will graduate from the police academy tomorrow. And uh, we congratulate and welcome him to the department, wishing him a successful and most gratifying career. As I said, Corporal, I'm sorry. What time is that tomorrow? 2 p.m. Yeah. I already mentioned Corporal La Rochelle. And, uh, I'm also pleased to announce that we have two candidates who will be joining the next recruit class in Concord at Police Standards, and I believe that begins July 20, 31st. July 31st. And their oath of office is next Tuesday here in the Great Hall at 1030. Is that right, Mark? Yes. Okay, so far so good. <laughs> yeah. um, also, there's going to be a part-time candidate. Uh, the captain's been working hard on getting her into the next part-time academy, whenever that will be. So we're uh, making great strides here and filling some gaps that, as you know, will help us provide better service to our constituents. Uh, general terms, the two-hour parking ban um, the summer ordinance, as we like to call it, goes into effect today. And, um, 
we're, we're uh, charged and we're going to be enforcing that vigorously for the board through uh, also the Chamber of Commerce and we're going to encourage people to use Glendon Street lot to when Molly the trolley is about to use that off-site parking as well and the and the, the goal here of course is to make sure there's a the traffic turns over so we have available parking spaces under outreach officers assisted with traffic and crowd movement at the Memorial Day ceremonies I was here that morning and uh, it was good to be out. it was a beautiful day we attended the senior health and wellness fair in this uh, hall and we had a table set up over there in the corner with uh, information on the good morning program and uh, dispatch Supervisor Lyons and Lieutenant Maloney and Senior Dispatcher Ken Paul helped out with that. The uh, Captain and Officer Peasley on Bike Patrol attended the Child Advocacy Center's Safety Day at the Glendon Street lot. I got a little bit damp, but it worked well. Yeah, it went very well. Yeah. Under other events, I have highlights from the staff meeting on June 8th to share with you. Some of those are public, some are non-public, but in general I could say that uh, I talked about my work history. Uh, some of the officers in it didn't know me at all. Uh, and I, I talked about my leadership style. I told them that uh, my door is always open. I don't sleep much, uh, so I don't mind getting a call in the middle of the night. I discussed my one-year contract with the police commission. I talked about the police mission. And uh, you know, there's an old, those people who study criminal justice know that the uh, protection of life, protection of property, the prevention of crime, the apprehension of offenders, the repression of criminality, the regulation of non-criminal conduct. But the job has expanded since then because we're also interveners and problem solvers. And I found over the years that there are many, there are many different ways of handling any given situation. And I said that if an RSA does not have a shell in it, that the officers are certainly able to use the discretion they have yeah. in resolving a matter. I told them my style is democratic, and I encourage everyone to offer suggestions to serve uh, others and improve operations, or simply how we conduct business. And uh, some of the specific items I talked to them about are the reimplementation of the written directive system. That includes a general orders, special orders, personnel orders, and memorandum. And I, somewhere on your desk here, folks, you know, your table, there is a yeah. sheet. It is an exemplar of how those will be recorded. And those will be in uh, conjunction with the standards from uh, national and state accreditation. And our organization charts will be updated to clearly define each year of responsibility. Uh, you have one here that we can talk about in non-public. That's the service division commander's jobs. And the captain already pointed out that I missed one, and that's fleet. That's a big part of his job. And we're talking about how we may be able to uh, filter some of that down to a patrol officer who's interested in that kind of thing. Uh, the shift summary uh, needs to be re reinstituted, and that started uh, the day after our staff meeting. And that's how we communicate when we don't see each other. It's important to know what a preceding shift did or when you have to pass something on to the next shift. Uh, it's already proven to be pretty successful, I would say, Captain. Yep. So I'm going to assume the function of uh, press releases, a part of the public information officer, who is Sergeant Sparrows. Uh, it's in his ballywick. And he's going to be going to school in the fall, I believe, a formal pro program. I, I attended one quite a while ago, uh, and uh, I, I want to get the message out there, what we do. So I'll, I'll take, uh, take that over in the short term. We talked about the downtown parking area and uh, the, the need to, to enforce this. We're going to have people out there in bike patrols, and we're also going to have officers getting out of the car and walking for 45 minutes to an hour, just like the old days. You know? um, 
We have uh, specific language governing the use of take-home cruises. We talked about that, and we made certain that everybody knows exactly what is in that order and how to follow it. Um, I just have a caveat here that the construction project may amend that current status, but we're going to see how we're going to handle the limited amount of space that we have. So, well, let's see what else I have here. Detective Emerson is going to modify his work schedule for the summer months to uh, help with the load. The 4th of July parking ban and operations plan. Um, we talked about that. Sergeant Bulliard did a really good job on putting the ops plan together for the 4th of July. And we uh, I'm glad to be able to say that this year we have enough help to get done what we need to do for the parade, the evening activities. I asked about performance evaluations. We'll comment on those, Captain. Yep. And, um, and I talked, talked about the upcoming construction and uh, remodeling of the building. Those are essentially what I have. Corporal La Rochelle uh, was the recording administrative corporal for that event. He did a great job on um, disseminating the information from the staff meeting to everybody in the department. I think that's all I have for public session. Oh, thank you. I just, I'm sorry. I just had a question. Um, it was information in here about the New Hampshire State Police uh, having a place oh, to, is to that the, going to be 24 hours or is they just coming from the, um, their main place to come here during the day? I think that's going to be there overnight. Though. It's going to be there all summer. Yeah. So we're so going to give special attention for Yeah, so it yeah. helps cover the troopers that are assigned to that boat on this side of the lake instead of driving all Excellent. the way to the other side, code, yeah. and um, so they can pick it up right here. So, um, what it will also do is help us with our operations. Absolutely. So we don't have to use the fire department every time to take them out of operation to go to the um, islands, islands on a call and um, stick them out there for a half hour, 45 minutes to an hour on a call. Their presence alone is going to help with the yeah. uh, control of getting into the, the dock areas. Yes. So. so State police utilizing people from there. They are so services. So unfortunately, they usually have 25 part timers within the Lake of Winnipesaukee. They only have 25 part timers within the state right now. So um, that, that, that's a job that yeah. I, I would love to have. It might be a retirement gig. I don't know. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. So then right now, He's got they use drag a bag. They, they use uh, utilizing some of their troopers. Um, do you have any questions? No. Chief? Um, Just uh, one more thing to put out in the public. Um, so July 4th, um, we have the parade and fireworks. Um, so what's going to be happening is the public road to the state road there, um, which is the parade route, is going to be shut down at 7 o'clock. Well, there's no parking within 7 o'clock all the way to um, the morning. in the morning till noon. And then the road will be shut down, the parade route road will be shut down at 9 o'clock. So nobody's getting through, or side roads coming up, so you're going to have to take your best route to get around the town is 109A. If you're coming in in Wombach Road, we'll go down Center Street to 109A to Wombach Road to get around, and vice versa coming back the other way. So okay. get that out. Okay, our next meeting date um, for the public to know is going to be the fourth Thursday in July. It's going to be on July 27th. We'll be back at the Wolfboro Public Library in the Bradley Room. The commission, the executive staff will be meeting in non-public prior to the four o'clock public meeting. Uh, so we'll start at 2.30. That'll give us time to go through our non-public business, um, which 
pr uh, procedurally, we re-enter into public session, um, coming out of non-public, but then we'll go into recess until we start <coughs> at 4 o'clock, so we won't go through the typical uh, opening process uh, when we begin the 4 o'clock meeting on the 27th. And just looking ahead, we're also going to be meeting on August 24th. Um, again, the fourth Thursday of the month. These are due to uh, scheduling conflicts. And at that meeting, we'll be across the hall in the Beaver Room. Right, uh, it'll be the first room on the right rather than the first room on the left uh, for that, those meetings. Um, okay. Um, we have a couple of gentlemen here from the Budget Committee, our liaisons, uh, Tom Bell and Matthew Platch. Uh, gentlemen, do either of you have anything to share with us or? Okay. Yeah, if you, is this microphone on at the podium? Oh yeah, just turn the switch on, Matt. Just turn that switch on. I am on the budget committee, and I remember last year when we added the second SRO, it was kind of controversial and it was a close vote that first went down against it, and then there was another vote, and then it got through five to four. It was supported by the budget committee, and questions were raised. Some of were, one question was kind of valid. I thought that why is, why is Wolfboro paying for 50% of the cost of the, S, of, this, of the two SROs? And I, I didn't think there was a really good, well thought answer to explain why Wolfboro is covering 50% of that cost. I, I thought the some of the arguments made by the naysayers were, you know, they had some merit um, that because the SROs are working full time in the school for nine months. 180 more, days. Yeah, it's, a, it's more than half the year. Mm -hmm. And Wolfboro pays 30% of the Governor Wentworth costs. So, um, I did talk with Chief Rondo. He thought, yeah, we, we could renegotiate that, the MOU, and try to get Governor Wentworth to pay more cost. I think this question's probably gonna come up again, and it would be helpful to have, maybe look at that, you know, either that MOU, either get them to pay more uh, when we go to the voters, when we go to the budget committee next year, or um, have a really good explanation of why we should be paying that. So I, I supported the second FRO right. wholeheartedly. You all know that. Right. And, and I, I feel it's an important thing to have there. Yeah, thank you. You know, these, our children are our most valuable asset for the future and for our town and for all the parents here. So I just, I just think it's going to be a, another tough mm -hmm. debate on this one. I can, okay. I can just anticipate. That. It's a, yeah, it's a, tough, it's a tough question to answer because this has been going yeah. on for over 20 years now with the very first MO. I know. And we had issued. the one SRO, and that, but now we've added a second uh, one. Understood. And yeah. obviously keeping in mind, too, that those SROs come back to the town of Wolfboro for their employment when the school is not in session. Yeah. So the town is on the hook basically for, for half of, of that officer's cost. Um, as far as the, the school district breakdown, I'm not even going to try to get into that quagmire, but because I, I, when you look at the, the allotment per community, you know, it's all different. You know, you would expect, in my opinion, a, a community like Wolfboro, which is larger than some of the others, to pay a little bit more. Um, but and some of the smaller ones are paying quite a bit more, you know. Yeah. So again, that, that's not my area of expertise, and I don't even want to go down that rabbit hole. Um, but I understand the question. Um, yeah. And uh, that's probably going to take um, us getting involved with the school district. Um, At least have a formula that yeah. isn't, doesn't seem random. I don't know. Cost sharing, that's all. I, I, can, I can tell you, Matt, that uh, no matter what we come up with, it, it's not going to satisfy everybody. It never does. <laughs> but we could do our best. Absolutely. Okay. It's just a thought. I'm not no, I, 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 I appreciate I you bringing that up. I'm because anticipating this issue. It was, a, it was one of the biggest issues this past year. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. Okay.
And uh, Selectman's Rep. Ryan DeShays. I'm sorry I'm a little bit late. Um, I'm covering for Luke, and I was down in Medford getting a auto repaired. But um, some good things, um, we have solar happening. We're having a, um, a solar array is being put um, on the outskirts of Wolfboro that will not affect our grid, but it's actually going to be in New Hampshire the first working agri-solar field. So it will be a working farm and a solar field at the same time. Um, we're also had, we also had a tour of all the Wolfboro Municipal Buildings to determine where the best um, allocation of solar would be in town, and we're hoping that um, if we get some projects going that maybe we can even incorporate it into the new public safety building. Um, possible. Um, we had a wonderful um, new event, which was the Heritage Commission had awards for any um, citizen in town who has bought and renovated and restored old buildings, like the Pickering House and um, some of the other buildings. And it, that was a wonderful event. Um, we're working on um, repairing some of the bike trails and getting um, a process in place where we know who's going to operate, who's going to run, and who's going to maintain the bike trails. Um, we have um, going to be having new um, oversight at our um, Pop Whaling Ice Rink so that we can expand all the services in the Pop Whaling Ice Rink. Um, and I want to thank the officers for um, listening to all the complaints that they get, and I get as many. Um, I've had um, two citizens that are both handicapped come to me repeatedly about the handicap spot um, by the bandstand. And even though I've gone and seen that one or two of the other spots are still open, they um, get very, very upset when a handicap spot is, is covered by a regular car, by a construction vehicle, by equipment, by anything. And unfortunately, when they yell at me, I have to pass the buck. So please don't get upset with me. But I have to take and, and bring it forward. I was elected by citizens, and I have to come forward with it. Um, and the last thing that I want to speak about was something that I was personally involved in and something that I think that we can um, use as a learning experience and maybe move forward in a different way. And that is that there was a deer that was hit at the end. Well, let, me, uh, let me just stop you right there, Brian. Yes. Uh, first of all, I, I want to have a I want to ask a question about the bike trails. Are we talking about both Abenaki and off of the uh, Fernal Crossing? Um, no, Fernal Crossing is under the purview of the um, Conservation Commission. Sewell Woods is under the purview of the Lakes Region Conservation Trust. It's just the Abenaki trails. So the uh, the Bike Alliance isn't. Well, what we're doing is. Um, we need to get a plan in place because there are trails there that are used by our water treatment plant. Mm -hmm. There are trails that are used by the cross-country ski. There are trails that are used by the um, snowshoe um, group, and there are trails used by single track alliance. The names don't line up. There are two over there, their trails. There are trails that are called one name by the Cross Country Ski Association and a different name by the bike trails. So let's imagine this. Somebody who does both activities gets hurt out there and then a call goes in to come get me here. You might not know where here, yeah, you might not know where here is because they give you the wrong trail name or they give you a trail name for a cross country ski trail when they're on a bike trail. So. Um, a, a, a gentleman who builds trails for a living who was out walking the trails actually gave a statement that he said our trails look like a dumped over bowl of spaghetti. He said, so what we're going to try and do is get them all labeled appropriately and get them located on maps appropriately so that we know what is where and what is happening. Um, and I, when I, trails are expanded and extended, and we know that this is what's, what's, what's going to be happening. We have trails right now that go down the hill and up the hill at the same time. So you have bike riders going the same way at the same time with each other. 
So they're going to build trails that are, you know, one direction trails to make it so that people don't collide into each other. And, um, and then we have to work on the, the new big flow trail that they're building it needs to cut across two downhill ski trails. Well, again, this is something we're going to have to have the two groups work out together. So as select board members, we're just trying to get all the groups together and say, okay, let's figure how we can all work together with this. So that's where we are with that. Well, I appreciate the signage and the maps because uh, I know one of the first times I went out to Fernald, they were just starting to, uh, to expand it further. And I had a hard time once I got in getting out. It was yeah. kinda we have an on. Eagle Scout who is going to do something very nice for us as his project. At the bottom of um, the hill at Abenaki, he's going to build a kiosk that has a um, place to put maps and brochures and things like that and have all the trails for at least the downhill marked, labeled, and um, as easier, you know, more advanced, advanced, whatever. So that's a good start to have that at the bottom of the hill so that everybody can see, oh, that's where our trails are. Um, everybody thinks there's two trails there. There's like five, uh, five or six or more. So, um, so that's, a, that's a good start. And so we're going to have to... Um, have them all GPSed and then go into a GIS system and they'll have layers where you'll be able to look at layer one, the trails, because some of the trails, one of the trails is used for bikes, walking, and for our wastewater treatment plant for their access. It is also 20 feet away from where the spray field sprinklers are. So on a good windy day, if you walk or bike on that trail, you could be getting sprinkled with effluent water. So we have to make sure that we have this worked out so that, you know, everybody's in the same place. Mr. Chairman, we can address the second concern about the handicapped uh, area down here. Yeah. We met with the town manager today, and the captain can speak to this. It helps yeah. clarify. Yeah, this. go ahead. Thank you, because yeah. I haven't heard anything. Like yeah, I was so out of town. As I mentioned, um, I think it was last month when you were here, we were trying to work on that. We've had a couple mm -hmm. meetings on it. Uh, with Steve Randall, Public Works, um, Town Planner Tavis, and um, Jim. Um, yeah, and manager. I know. I think we're going to move that spot. We're going to move the spot. There's two ways to do it. There's a Plan A and a Plan B. We're just waiting for approvals with the Kate Park because I believe there's a Friends of the Kate Park. Yeah. So we have to get approval to do something, and that's what we're waiting for. Once that gets approved, it will get done. Okay, that's good. So. And I know it's like I said, people are very, very. Um, Not, not adamant, but they, they're very concerned, especially people who use the spots are very, yeah. very concerned when they see yeah. a spot that's being taken. Well, especially when the extensions of the porches that happen out there, which is great extensions. Correct. I mean, it's great seating. You get to see the water. But it, um, when they put that parking spot in, those things weren't there. Yeah. So you could open both doors. <laughs> now you and, can't. Yeah. And people, as, as I know, people need to know that that is yeah. built on his property. Yeah. The property lines don't it's, always... It, yeah, the property line is that white line. Yeah. That's... On the ground. Uh, which is the parking space. Yeah. So really, um, so, we have so we have some plans in there, one or the other, depending on uh, the friends of the Cape Park. Yeah. Which is and the cool. handicap ramp came out beautiful. If I, I don't know if anybody has seen it, um, but John Thurston went above and beyond. Yeah. That ramp is oh, yeah. absolutely beautiful down beautiful there. Job. He's just waiting. Um, I was talking to him the other day. He's just waiting for... Um, some new railings to come in that he ordered, um, and he did everything top shelf. It's, it's a beautiful ramp. So, um, and the last one is, and I, and I was involved in it, and um, like I said, I, I think this could be a, a teaching moment. Um, a deer was struck at the end of Old Lakeview Terrace. It was hit, and it, to my best knowledge, looking at the car, by the mirror of the car, it, um, it had some broken teeth and it had a, a severe gash on its nose. It was laying on the ground and it was panting in, in distress and whatnot. Um, so let's forget about that part. Um, there was a woman there that was hysterical and she was calling her son to have her son come shoot it. And I told her that I didn't think that was appropriate. There was the person who hit it and then his boss showed up and the, uh, one of them, or both of them were going, oh, basically, we'll take the carcass. Um, and um, a police officer came. I called Fish and Game, because I know Fish and Game usually takes care of that. Um, Not usually, but... Yeah. Within about um, six minutes or so, or so, an officer came, and I thought that was great. He was there. 
and um, the deer went from laying down to sitting up. Now, when it was laying down, I did a, a, a quick evaluation of it because I have put deer in my car before and taken them to uh, Madison, New Hampshire, where they rehab young deer, not old deer, but young deer. Um, I've taken a, um, a nest of um, wood ducks there. I've taken a groundhog to the Audubon Society. So if I find something I think I can save, I save it. And um, the deer looked like it was trying to right itself. It went to a sitting up position, head erect, um, no marks on any other part of its neck, its body, its side, whatnot. Um, the officer that came was um, pretty convinced in his mind that the deer needed to be put down. I had a complete different opinion of it. Um, the officer used his judgment and did what he thought he needed to do and euthanize the deer. Um, the unfortunate part is I just spent um, about four hours yesterday walking the town of Wolfboro, passing out flyers for our event we're going to have at the town docks, Lake Winnipesaukee Day. I passed out 77 flyers at businesses. I had three parents come to me and tell me that they were driving bar by when the deer was euthanized. And they were kind of beside themselves. Um, there were cars going back and forth on the road. There were three uh, pedestrians standing behind the officer when this all occurred. I would have liked if the officer had taken a little bit more time, called for backup. Um, I was told by the police department that there was no backup available for him. Um, and um, I, I myself talked to Becky at Fish and Game and to Becky's boss, and they said that they, they apologized to me and said, we're sorry we didn't have enough time to get back to you or to the police department about what to do with the deer, because supposedly it's their call. Um, and um, I think that, um, and Fish and Game, by the way, said that they give for an, a, a hit animal up to an hour, depending on their discretion, to decide whether or not the animal has the ability to revive itself. I mean, everybody has seen a bird flash, smash into a window, lay on the ground, and an hour later it's gone. So um, I'm hoping that the commission can look at this and say, okay, let's, let's see, if this happens, what is our policy? Do we have one officer? Do we have two officers? Do we have one officer that's cordoning off traffic and opening the area up? Um, and do we rely on fish and game? Do we not rely on fish and game? What is the process? What is the procedure? If you can, I mean, it's pretty easy to can tell if an animal is really severely mortally wounded. But then there can be gray areas where, you know, you can save wildlife if you choose to. So I'm just hoping that the commission puts a policy together with the police department and fish and game and we be, we're able to use this going forward. And that's it. Um, we'll take that under advisement, yeah. Brian. The, um, what the officer did that day is uh, standard operating procedure, if you will, that's accepted practice uh, throughout the state, pretty much every agency. I had a bull moose one day in Tamworth a number of years back with a truck, and I thought I'd killed him. Slid up on the hood of my truck, fell off. When I got out of the truck to look at him, he was getting himself back up. He was trying to stand up. It was obviously had broken a rear leg. Um, so he laid down, and he looked like a dog the way he was laying in the road with his head up and grass hanging off his velvet-covered rack, you know, and a beautiful animal. Um, but as soon as the uh, – and, and I made the appropriate phone calls, but as soon as the chief of Tamla showed up and I saw him walking up with a shotgun, because a deer could not move on its own. I took my nephew, who was only 10 at the time, with me. We went back to look at the ambulance. Um, it, it's, it's a process that's been used. Um, the officer is entitled to use their best discretion. Obviously, we try to, they try to keep traffic moving. They have to secure their scene. They have a lot of, a lot of things. Um, I don't see that policy changing, but we will take under advisement your concern. Um, the only thing I would, it, that I think, and this is what the, the parents said to me the most, was um, if, if two officers were there, one could take care of the traffic situation because when an officer is going to be euthanizing an animal, he is now focused on that job. Mm -hmm. 
and he's not focused on what else could be happening around him. He deserves something, you know, another officer there to assist him in that situation. I've, I've, uh, well, we've all reviewed the report of the incident. Um, you know, the officer did um, a great job with the way that he handled it. Um, I don't want to get into some of the other particulars unless we're in a non-public session. Yeah. Um, but uh, I saw a deer. Um, I was riding my bike through Tuftonboro, right by the um, Tuftonboro Beach, and I saw a, dar a deer get clipped. A young one went down, laying on its side. A guy came out of his truck with a rifle, was going to shoot it. Me and another gentleman said, "Well, wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on. This deer was scuffed up a little bit. Not bad, but it was scuffed up a little bit." Um, Maybe the person had, had braked enough. They saw it and they braked they break the car enough. Um, after, it took about 15 or 20 minutes for that deer and two, try, two tries for it to get up. And once it did get up, it walked to the edge of the road, jumped a guardrail this high, went off into the woods. It took him quite a while, 20 minutes, a half an hour, something like that. And I know every officer is gonna have a different opinion in their mind how is this animal? What do we need to do? But I think it is possible to put a universal procedure in place. Two officers, especially if it's on 28. Will you, will you fund another officer? Well, come on, come on. The, you can, for a 20 minute or a 30 minute process, I think if it was a kid who got hit by a bike, and I'm not comparing a deer to a kid, don't anybody say that. There would be officers there, there would be fire there, there would be ambulance there, there would be everything. I think for a half an hour we can have two officers. That, I, well, I, I think, think, we I think what you have to understand, Brian, again, this is, this is a normal and this has been going on for, for decades. Correct. If not longer. Um, and I can't speak for these two gentlemen. I and again, I am for, not condemning yeah, the police. No, 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 I understand that, but I'm, I'm coming from an area that there, there's three former police officers up here. Yep. I was trained as an EMT. I can assess a human that's been injured if I know the mechanism of injury. If I see that a deer has been hit by a vehicle, I don't know how it was hit, where it was hit, what's going in, on inside their head. They could have brain damage. I don't know what's going on inside of their body. There could be internal injuries that are going to... And no, of no officer is a biologist. We, under we understand that. No officer is a biologist. That's why we rely on fish and game. Right. And, and unfortunately, like everybody else, they're, they're short-staffed. Correct. They, we rarely can we get them to a scene, so they, they push it off to us. Uh, and the other thing that we have to look at, too, is, you know, utilizing our resources to the best possible, in, in the best possible manner. You know, I can guarantee you, without even having a discussion, that an officer's not going to grab a deer, throw it in the back of the cruiser, and, and take off for an hour and a half. Oh, no, it's not their responsibility. It's, it's, could die on the yeah. way, and, yeah, and then, it, you know. Th that is not their responsibility. I understand um, that. But, you know, we, you know, the department works within the, the parameters that it can at the time, and yesterday, obviously, there was not a second officer. I know the officer on the scene was trying to clear traffic as much as possible to get them through there before he did dispatch the deer, mm -hmm. um, which was the right thing to do. Um, yeah. And it would have been nice if he had assistance and, and traffic could have been stopped and kept away because traffic was within 20 or 25 feet and pedestrians were within 20 or 25 feet when the deer was euthanized. And that's what scared some people. Um, I, had, I had started driving away when, um, when it happened, but I had, like I said, I had three different mothers come to me yesterday when I was in, ta in, the, in the town, walking the town. Um, two of them business owners, and they happened to be driving their kids because it was a very unopportune, inopportune time. They were driving their kids to Crescent Lake and to Carpenter School. And so it's a kind of thing where they were, um, one of them was driving, said all of a sudden almost lost control of their car because they were all of a sudden driving by and they heard the, the gunshots. So it's just something that, you know, we have to think about. It's, uh, unfortunately, it's, it's, it's sad reality. Yeah. Um, sometimes it's unavoidable. I've seen people freak out because a hunter has a deer strapped out of the car. I mean, well, for her, it was just the sound of the gunfire. Mm -hmm. She didn't, she, you know, she wasn't aware of what was going on, and then all of a sudden it was, you know, she was like, oh, my Understood. God, what was that? Okay. Um, so just something to think about. All right. We'll, we'll take it under advice, and thank you. Good citizen action. Um, John, do you have anything else before we go on? Okay. Well, gentlemen, do you have anything before we go on? Thank you.
Okay, at this time, I'll entertain a motion to enter the non-public session. I move that we go to uh, non-public. Under, under RSA 91A, under personnel. Oh, Bernie, I'm sorry, the public never likes to speak. Okay. Please do. <laughs> Deal with me. Um, and please identify yourself. Obviously. Bernie Willinsky from Wolfboro. Okay. Um, I've been looking at parking situations downtown for certain reasons. And I noticed um, on the handicap, because you brought it up today, that there's one particular handicap spot, the one closest to the dockside grill. Yep. Now, I might be wrong having Massachusetts in my head, but not only is it nicely painted on the ground, shouldn't it be a four foot, four to six foot sign in front? So if that painted area is covered for any reason, snow, grass, dirt, or whatever, they can't cite somebody for that. And I think every other spot, not just here, but all over, has a sign. That doesn't. Uh, it's got a sign behind it. It's got a sign right up at Cape Park. The one closest to the dock site has a four to six foot sign in front of it? Oh, which? Over by uh, dock side the grill. Ice, the ice cream stand. Yeah. Oh, you're talking about the ice cream stand? Dock, that might have dock side grill. A, over the winter, who knows, but we'll certainly yeah. look into that. Yeah. I was down there today. I don't think there's a sign. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, it has just, to meet the, the, the state requirements or it's not. Excuse me? But, it has to meet the state requirements or it's not a legitimate parking well, space. So, yeah, we'll, we'll uh, check that out. Thank okay. you. Yeah. That's it. Thank you, Bernie. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I must have the wrong. Park yourself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so then um, again, uh, thank you for, for speaking up. Um, I want to take a motion to non public session under RSA 91A under personnel matters. I so move. Moved by Commissioner O'Brien. Seconded. Seconded by Commissioner Coop. Roll call vote. Commissioner yes. O'Brien. Commissioner Coop. Yes. And Commissioner Wood is a yes. We'll stand a recess while we clear the room. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, I think I had the wrong one. Uh, he just told me where it is.